Holy God, today, Wagner College remembers Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s struggle for equality, justice, and dignity for African Americans that inspired so many other reform movements that seek to highlight the plight of the oppressed in society. We pray that all those in civil and religious authority be reminded that we all have been created in your image and that there is an intrinsic dignity in each of us that calls for uplifting every man and woman, young and old. We ask you to ignite the hearts and minds of tonight's honorees and all those who may be watching remotely. Help us to be focused in our fight against complicit injustice. Help us to remember that like Dr. King, you gave each of us our own prophetic voice that speaks truth to power and advances the values of your kingdom. We pray these things in light and love, amen. Thank you so much, Sean, for reading Chaplain Holly Bonner's invocation for us this evening. Good evening to all of you that have joined us uh, from near and far in our virtual MLK Agent of Change Award ceremony tonight. My name is Ange Conception and I serve as the Assistant Dean of Campus Life. Tonight, we are super excited to honor our recipients, but we also want to thank those that have been part of their journey and have been immense sources of support and love. I would now like to introduce and invite President Joel W. Martin to speak about the award and introduce tonight's keynote speaker. Thank you, Dr. Conception. For over a decade at Wagner College, we've gathered as a community and as a family to honor the life and legacy of Dr. King by recognizing our own phenomenal change agents. The MLK Agent of Change Award is presented to an agent of change within the Wagner community who embodies Dr. King's vision of servant leadership and understands that faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Recipients must be one of the following, a current Wagner College faculty, staff, student, or alum. In a few moments, we'll learn about the work that our five awardees have accomplished within and outside our Wagner community. They have also prepared inspiring and thoughtful remarks for us. It is my hope that each of us will find inspiration in their work and their words for and with others so that we can continue Dr. King's legacy in our own spheres of influence. We are proud to recognize our awardees, Dr. Stephen Thomas, Dr. Ruta Shaw Gordon, Jasmine Clark Glover, Carrie Lee Alexander, and Jonathan Irizarry. Finally, we are honored to have our 2021 MLK Agent of Change keynote speaker, Dr. Rita Reynolds. Dr. Reynolds earned her doctorate from UMass Amherst in the prestigious and renowned African American Studies program and is a 19th and 20th century historian of African American history and American history. She is currently the chair of the history department and director of the American Studies Program, faculty director of the Expanding Your Horizons Study Abroad Program. She has final revisions of her manuscript with the University of Georgia Press for her book entitled Free and Insane in Charleston Freedom and Divorce Among Free People of Color in Antebellum, South Carolina. It's my honor and privilege to introduce Dr. Rita Reynolds. Thank you so much, Dr. Martin. I appreciate your introduction and your words of wisdom. I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank the staff of the Campus Life for this uh, for this chance uh, to talk a little bit about civil rights and women in the United States. Uh, Letty Romero, and Concepcion, Ellen Navarro, Sadiq Salimana, uh, Rudishaw Garden, Garden, all of uh, them work so hard to make this happen. Um, and I'm so appreciative that I'm, I am, have been asked to be a part of it this year. Um, I'd like to so, sort of start by um, giving you a, a quiz, right? And so I want you to think about this. 
If I asked you to name three of the most important civil rights leaders from the past 60 years, um, who would you name? Uh, I would argue that most people wouldn't have a problem with that. Most would begin by naming Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, John Lewis, since we just lost him in the last few months, and of course, Rosa Parks. But if I were to push this further by asking uh, to just list women activists, I suspect answering would be much more difficult. I'd like to take a few minutes to ponder the unsung role women have played in the civil rights movement and how their actions were central to the success of the fight for equality in the United States. Now, by the 1970s, as the history of civil rights activism was taken up by scholars as an important component of modern American history, the emphasis was largely directed at men who, for the most part, were the spokesmen for the movement. Activists such as Dr. Martin Luther King and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference were identified as national leaders of the struggle for racial equality. In the area of legislative changes, Roy Wilkins and Thurgood Marshall of the NAACP challenged Southern, Southern apartheid laws. And John Lewis and Bob Moses of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, uh, also known as SNCC, organized white, black, and white college students to go south to educate and register black Southerners to vote. And while we celebrate um, these activists, much less is known about the role women played in these organizations and others. So for instance, uh, Rosa Parks is largely known for her sort of defiance on the Montgomery, in Montgomery in 1955, when she refused to give up her seat to a white writer. I think every American child knows that, right? Um, I have to admit that I was quite surprised a few years ago when I was visiting Rome, I came across a book in Italian that told the story of Rosa Parks um, sort of refusing to give up that seat, right? And starting the modern civil rights movement. Um, um, and so, you know, as a result of this act, which is, which is nationally known, um, Mrs. Parks was arrested for violating the state's Jim Crow laws. And of course, unknown to her at the time, her act was the beginning of the end of segregation uh, on city buses. But Mrs. Park's activism um, didn't begin that day in 1955. It began long before. She had taken part in the NAACP as early as 1932. And while a member, she took part in, uh, in the organization's activities Certainly one was raising funds for the defense of Scottsboro, Scottsboro boys who were nine uh, black teenagers who were falsely accused of raping two white women aboard a train near Scottsboro, Alabama in 1931. Um, in the years after the bus boycott, uh, Mrs. Parks continued to work for black equality on not just a local level, but on a national level. Now, the the Montgomery bus boycott is notable because, uh, because of most of the work that was necessary to make the campaign a success was largely done by local women who had been activists before they were called into service for the boycott. One example was Joanne Robinson, who was a member of a local civil rights group called the Women's Political Council. At a moment's notice, Robinson organized the boycott. She began by mimeographing um, or copying, right, for those who were born after a certain time, 35,000 handbills. And sort of mimeographing requires that you crank a machine. I mean, 35,000 times, that's pretty amazing. She then, with the help of other women um, in the WPC, posted and distributed these flyers around the city, alerting members of the black community to stay off the buses, right, in support of Mrs. Parks. Her efforts helped pull together the black community who had been terrorized on city buses. Um, and the Monday after Mrs. Parks' arrest, 98% of African-Americans stayed off the buses. 
after a year of walking, the Montgomery, uh, Montgomery Blacks celebrated the end of Jim Crow seating on the buses. And I think that's pretty astonishing. We associate the Montgomery, the Montgomery bus boycott with Dr. Martin Luther King, a young minister, right, who had just arrived in Montgomery as sort of the face and the force behind it. But in fact, it was largely women who did the hard work. Another activist, Diane Nash, many years Rosa Parks Jr. also moved behind the scenes to organize local, excuse me, local and national civil rights activism as a youth member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee or SNCC. She was so committed to, she was, she was committed to civil rights agitation. Nash was willing to put her safety on the line for the cause. Uh, in 1961, she received a call from Attorney General Robert Kennedy, who tried to dissuade her and members of her group of freedom riders who were integrating Southern interstate travel by riding a Greyhound bus through the deep south, beginning in Washington and ending in New Orleans. The 22-year-old Nash told Kennedy that they, quote, were well aware of the dangers of living in the South. She then told Kennedy that several students had given me, her, sealed envelopes and told her what to do with them if they never returned. Nash's activism didn't end there. She remained with SNCC and other, uh, and, and, and took part in other forms of nonviolent resistance. One uh, notable one is the brutal Selma voter rights uh, movement in 1965, uh, where John Lewis was uh, beaten to unconsciousness. Another one of the most important civil rights activists um, was Ella Baker. Uh, the Harlem native worked with almost every civil rights organization in the United States in the years before and after the landmark Brown Supreme Court decision in 1954 that desegregated American schools. Beginning in 1938, Baker spent 25 years working with the NAACP. Four years, she worked as a consultant to the Southern Christian Leadership Conference um, and Dr. Martin Luther King um, and I think one of the reasons why she left that organization really had to do with her ideas of what are called participa participatory democracy. She believed that one person shouldn't leave the mo shouldn't lead the movement, but in fact that it was um, a community. Um, it should be a community event. Um, but in in leaving sort of SCLC. Um, she further developed this idea of participatory democracy, um, which, um, which, as I said, sort of focused on um, this, this notion of direct citizen uh, participation. I think that we can, we can relate to this at Wagner um, because this is something that, you know, we encourage students to take part in, right, in many forms. Um, Mrs. Baker's idea was realized in the creation of the uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee SNCC, as I've said. Uh, Ella Baker's organization skills harnessed student uh, activism um, of the student sit-ins in North Carolina in 1960. Uh, she organized uh, a meeting of students at Shaw University in North Carolina. Um, and one of the things that she was quite clear to the students was that she was unwilling to lead student activists. She believed that they were better suited to head their own civil rights organization instead of joining one of the other established ones. Now, in the years after the movement, Ella Baker was asked about her role uh, in which she stated, she said, you don't see me on TV. You don't see news stories about me. The kind of role that I tried to play was to pick up pieces and put together pieces out of which I hoped organization might come. My theory is strong, people don't need strong leaders. Baker's ideas of group-centered leadership 
and the need for radical democratic social change spread, spread throughout the student movements of the 1960s. Um, and I would argue that her role changed the direction of the movement. Students who took part in, to, who took part in SNCC programs um, between 1960 and 1966 went on to begin other civil rights organizations that fought for equality for women and other ethnic and minority groups. Now, in addition to Mrs. Baker, certainly um, the ideas that Ella Baker put forth um, were, were sort of found and realized in another woman named Fannie Lou Hamer. Um, it, was, it was she who took um, part in SNCC's Freedom Summer in 1964 as a community organizer. Um, and uh, in those years in sort of uh, identifying her place uh, as a leader of the movement, movement, she also organized voter rights, uh, um, activities, women's rights. Um, uh, she was also a co-founder of um, and vice chair of the Freedom Democratic Party. This was important because she took a series of ideas and then moved them into sort of political activism, um, which was important at that time uh, in the struggle for civil rights. Uh, Fannie Lou Hamer was important because she became the face of racial activism in Mississippi, right? One of the one of the most sort of segregated and brutal states in the Union. Um, and despite beatings by white supremacists, uh, she advocated for direct political action by African Americans. Um, and as a member of the Freedom Democratic Party. Um, she represented disenfranchised Black Mississippians in the 1964 Democratic National Convention. Now, I certainly don't have time to sort of talk about the other sort of activists, and there are scores of them. But these are certainly just a few examples of how women were sort of central to the fight for equality. Um, but they were willing to take a sort of um, a behind the scenes role right, where they were moving mountains, right, while others took the credit or got the credit for the work that they did. I hope that this sort of brief discussion um, about women in the civil rights movement will encourage some of you to go forward and um, think about um, learning about sort of gender and, and civil rights, or perhaps for others, you might be able to, um, to translate this into your own acts um, of, of activism and grassroots movements. Thank you so much. Ellen, you're on mute. Sorry, I'm having some technical issues today. We all go through that. Good evening. My name is Ellen Navarro. I'm the director of the Center for Intercultural Advancement. And tonight, our faculty recipient for the MLK Agent of Change Award is Dr. Stephen W. Thomas. Dr. Thomas has been teaching literature and film studies in the English department at Wagner College since 2012. For more than a decade, he has also been working with several Ethiopian and Ethiopian diaspora organizations in support of creative talent in literature and film, including Sanskrit Communications, Ojina, Oramo Arts and Diaspora, and the Ethiopian Film Producers Association. In 2016, he was a Fulbright Scholar at Adidas Ababa University in Ethiopia. While teaching at the university, he and Sanscribe also collaborated with the Adidas Ababa Bureau of Culture and Tourism and the US Embassy to conduct a 10 week film workshop, for which the city government awarded him a certificate of appreciation. He was a Barra sabbatical fellow at the McNeil Center for Early American Studies at the University of Pennsylvania in 2018. 
His most recent scholarly work relating to his activities in Ethiopia, including a chap include a chapter on Aramo cinema in the book, Cine Ethiopia, the history and politics of film in the Horn of Africa, 2018, co-authored with an Aroma novelist, an article on globalization in Ethiopian cinema in the journal Black Camera, 2012, and an article on multi-ethnic political context for Ethiopian American literature in the journal Melis, 2020. He also published an online magazine article about women in Ethiopia's movie industry, the Zokalo Public Square. From Dr. Thomas's nomination, open quote, in advocating for the Ethiopian film industry, Dr. Thomas counters the negative stereotypes Americans tend to have of Ethiopians, which also affects how white people view black people generally, close quote. He continues to work with filmmakers, artists, and scholars both inside Ethiopia and in its diaspora of diverse ethnic backgrounds and viewpoints and has fostered dialogue among different groups during some politically difficult circumstances. His recent scholarly publications explore complicated subjects and shed light on lesser known communities such as Aramo filmmakers. Both his scholarship and his teachings are rooted in the above civic engagement. Thank you. Dr. Thomas. Hi, uh, thank you, Ellen. I'm. I'm really grateful for this award. Um, it means a lot to me. I wasn't sure what to say today. I, I guess that I think of my work in Ethiopia mostly as a supporter, um, a kind of cheerleader. Uh, sometimes I feel lucky enough to have been able to spark some insights in the minds of others or enable them to make connections with people they might not otherwise meet or talk to. Uh, to do this work, there are quite a lot of people who have supported me and cheered me on and given me insight and helped me make connections with so many amazing people that have enriched my life. And so I have a lot of people to thank and, and this, word, this award is in a way uh, for all of them. Uh, first, I have to thank the English department who are without a doubt, the best department at Wagner and without whose unwavering support of pretty much everything I've tried to do, I would be most certainly lost. I should also thank the provost's office, both Jeffrey Krauss and Lily McNair for their support over the years. Uh, my journey has taken many turns and changed a lot since it started way back in 2007, when my wife Maya Tessima and I first attended an International Oromo Youth Association Conference in Minnesota that was organized by, by Arfase and Jawar, two individuals who model themselves after the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. From that conference, some of us in the Oromo community created the online magazine Ogena Oromo Arts, Arts and Diaspora, for which I served as the managing editor. A year later at the Oromo Studies Association conference, Maya introduced me to someone who was the first person to publish novels and make films in the Oromo language, Daba Wayesa. All of my work in Ethiopia started with Daba, who soon after we met, founded the Sanskrit Foundation to empower young people in Ethiopia to tell their stories and make films. Uh, thanks, Tafi, in the chat. Um, over the years, I have been inspired by my former students, Baisa, Kelbesa, Kumsa, Fikr, Gadise, Hana, Mikhail, Nafiad, to name a few of you. For the past eight years, I've been working closely with Sanskrit's manager in Addis Ababa, Tesfaye Makonen, to help organize workshops and support aspiring filmmakers. Because of Tesfaye, we were able to reach out to other organizations in Ethiopia, including the Alatinos Filmmakers Association, the Film Producers Association, the National Theater, the Ministry of Culture, the Addis Ababa Bureau of Culture and Tourism, the Zalan Creative and Cultural Center, the Pushkin Center for Science and Culture, the Oromo Cultural Center, Rift Valley University, Mekana Yesu Seminary, Addis Ababa University, and the US Embassy. In this way, we were able to bring people from different ethnic groups and different walks of life to discuss cinema together and even make films together. Many of the people at these places have opened up doors for me. Abebe, Abone, Alessandro, Arsema, Elias, Jerusalem, Karyat, Li Ping, Hana, Manuazal, Menelik, Mike, Miki, Maron. Not a week goes by that I don't think how lucky I am just to know you all. And of course, I must also thank my, my friend and co-author Teferi Nugusi Tafa, who has become like a brother to me. The two of us have had some very difficult 
very difficult experiences together, like the Arecha and Bifshoftu four years ago. And I'm thankful that he and his wonderful wife, Meti, have been able to make it to the United States. And of course, from the beginning and through it all, I have to thank my wife, Maya Tessima, without whom none of this would ever have happened. Thank you. Thank you. Our staff recipient of the MLK Agent of Change Award is Dr. Ruta Shaw Gordon, Vice President of Internationalization, Intercultural Advancement, and Campus Life, and Ms. Jasmine Clark Glover, Vice President of Workplace Culture and Inclusion, Chief Human Resources Officer, Chief Diversity Officer, and Title IX Coordinator. Dr. Ruta Shaw Gordon serves as the Vice President for Internationalization, Intercultural Affairs, and Campus Life at Wagner College. She has worked in higher education for close to 30 years, has broad experiences in leadership development, diversity, internationalization, and administration. Dr. Shaw Gordon serves on the Project Hospitality Board of Directors and a member of the New American Colleges and Universities Board. She earned her PhD in leadership and change at Antioch University. At Wagner, she serves as the co-chair for the Diversity and Internationalization Action Council and is responsible for furthering the strategic blueprints for the college around these areas. She leads the connection of students' ac academic and co-curricular experiences, creating the opportunity to learn more about themselves as civically engaged, psychosocially adapted, and interculturally competent citizens of the world. Ms. Clark Glover provides leadership in the college's strategic planning and vision of talent management, retention and development, diversity and inclusion, as well as HR policies and programs. Ms. Clark Glover joined Wagner in 2015 as Director of Human Resources and the college's Title IX coordinator. She previously served as Assistant Director of Human Resources at New York City Technical College and an HR professional for the City University of New York's Graduate Center. She is a member and past president of the Board of College and University Professional Association of Human Resources. She is certified by the Society for Human Resources Management. She also holds certifications in business and eth ethical leadership and leadership and succession planning. She is a doctoral candidate at Temple University, Fox Business School of Business. She holds a master's in industrial and labor relations from Baruch College and a BS MS in sociology from Boston College. And now Dr. Shaw Gordon. Good evening, everyone. I'm gonna be honest, it feels weird to be on the receiving end this evening. I'm so used to being on the giving end of this program. I want to thank the organizers of this event and the nominators for this incredible honor. Thank you, Dr. Reynolds for helping us continue to be lifelong learners. And I'd also like to congratulate the other recipients of this award, Jonathan, Carrie, Steve, and Jasmine. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> so let me just go back to wanting to congratulate the other recipients of this award, Jonathan, Carrie, Steve, and Jasmine. I'm in continuous awe and gratitude for the work each of you do to keep Dr. King's legacy alive and for being such an integral part of our beloved community here at Wagner College. When Ange told me that I was one of the recipients of this award, my initial reaction was, I shouldn't get this award. This is my job. And truly, I think that's how I see Dr. King's legacy, as my job, whether it's in my formal title or not. So before going further, I'd like to say it's with great humility and gratitude that I accept the Martin Luther King Agent of Change Award. I'd like to thank my parents, my siblings, my husband, and my children for their role in shaping how I think about issues of fairness, kindness, love, 
equity, and injustice. As an immigrant to the United States who has had the opportunity to live across the country, often being the only person of color in a classroom or a department, I've made it my mission to try and create a community where everyone feels welcome and valued. I'd like to thank the many mentors and my colleagues, both here at Wagner and at other places that I've worked, who've helped to expand my knowledge and supported me in making changes to policies and structures to ensure a better experience for other people. And I wanna thank the students at Wagner for their willingness to talk about their experiences, for helping us to see where we could do better and for partnering with us to create lasting change. We know that to change a culture, we need to engage in difficult yet respectful dialogues, see the possibilities as well as the problems, and to work together to achieve our goals. I've been so proud to be a part of this community that we're creating and recreating every day at Wagner for the last 19 years. And this past year has been a tough one on all of us. And the pandemic has heightened our awareness around systemic inequalities but it's also strengthened our resolve and our uh, resilience. I'm proud of the Wagner community continuing these difficult dialogues and changing and using that, those dialogues to change into action for positive change. Dr. King's legacy is a call to action. He said that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. When you see something that is not right, you must say something. This year, our democracy has come under fire. We have seen even more divisiveness, a rise in hate crimes and bigotry, and it is up to each of us to engage in the difficult conversations and to be upstanders. In the late John Lewis's words, ordinary people with extraordinary vision can redeem the soul of America by getting into what I call good trouble, necessary trouble. As we celebrate Dr. King's legacy here tonight, I hope that each of you will take a pledge to not be silent, but to engage when you see injustices, to get in good trouble, necessary trouble. This will ensure that we're leaving a positive legacy for those who come behind us and create a more inclusive world. Thank you again for this wonderful honor. Wonderful, thank you so much, Dr. Shaw Gordon for your remarks and congratulations again. Unfortunately, Ms. Clark Lover is unable to attend this evening though she wishes to provide us with her message to the community, um, which are as follows, quote, I am honored to be recognized for this award and so sorry I cannot be with you all virtually tonight. This award embodies my core values and what I desire to bring to any organization or community I am a part of. Understanding Wagner's mission and dedication as well as supporting our amazing employees and students who take this mission seriously and passionately is an honor and privilege, end quote. Uh, so again, we wish to uh, congratulate uh, Ms. Clark Lover on uh, receiving this award. And now I would like to introduce Mr. Sadiq Suleiman, uh, Assistant Director for the Center for Intercultural Advancement. Thank you, Dean Ange. Um, good evening, everybody. I'd like to share a quick story about myself before I introduce our alumni, alumni recipient of the MLK Agent of Change Award. So as someone who grew up in a Muslim and Christian household, I find myself struggling with religion as an adult. However, now I consider myself to be spiritual. So I spend most of my leisure time listening to Krista Tippett's On Being podcast that shares information on how to build a spiritual foundation for a loving world. I find spirituality as the foundation to understand in ourselves and each other so I say that to say, um, the last podcast I actually listened to was by Ariel Berger, whose mentor was Ellie Wiesel. And one of the things he mentioned in the podcast about learning from Eli Wiesel was, never allow anyone to be humiliated in your presence. So my takeaway from this quote is that not only can you not humiliate someone, you cannot be indifferent. You cannot afford to be a bystander. 
you are in some ways implicated in what happens. So with that, thank you, Ruta, for your commitment towards cultivating a community of upstanders. It is my distinct honor to introduce our alumni recipient of the MLK Agent of Change Award, Kerry Lee Alexander. Kerry is a researcher, curator, educator from Bloomingfield, Connecticut. Currently, she's a PhD candidate in the history department at Howard University, studying 19th century enslavement. Kerry is also Howard's inaugural graduate student mentor to the Mellon May Undergraduate Fellowship and was 2018-2020 Education and Public History Fellow at the National Women's History Museum, where she still serves as a cura guest curator. Most recently, Kerry was was selected as um, the Vice President of Student Affairs and Inclusion at Xavier University, Louisiana. Give me one moment, sorry. At Wagner, Kerry was an active student leader committed to community organizing as, and selected the Voice of Wagner commercial the 2015 commencement speaker, the student recipient of the MLK Agent of Change and Distinguished Leader Award in 2014. Seven years later, Kerry continues to devote herself to civic engagement, activism, public programming. She also curated a featured Black History Month exhibit on the homepage of google.com in 2019. Kerry holds a Bachelor's of Science in Arts Administration from Wagner College and a Master's of Art in Theological Studies from Princeton Theological Seminary. It is my distinct honor to turn it over to the alumni recipient of the MLK Agent of Change Award. Hello. I'm trying to find my light to make sure you can see me. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Zadig. Thank you. Uh, to the Dean's Office, to the Center for Intercultural Advancement, the Division of Campus Life, everyone who has uh, been committed to making this a tremendous event and a celebration. As well as, you know, I would also like to thank my family and my friends and my tribe, uh, both from Wagner and, you know, the people that I've met along the way. So as Sadiq mentioned, I actually, uh, back in 2014, had the privilege of receiving this award as a student. And so I'm truly humbled and, and grateful to be receiving this award all of these years later as an alum. And so for me, that means, right, that the Wagner plan works, that the learning communities and the dedication to civic engagement and the countless hours spent in the hospice are all deeply meaningful and transformative. Uh, that, that the time chasing the ferry shuttle, trying to get to an internship, or the shortness of breath walking up the Harborview Hill for an 8 a.m. class, or uh, the many conversations with friends and um, professors in the library, that all of those moments weren't in vain. And so in fact, you know, those moments for me were foundational to who I've become. They've served as the building blocks on my journey that have stabilized me in times of chaos and provided me with the structural integrity to stand firm in times of adversity. They've taught me to deeply value the stories and the histories of the people I encounter both in person and between the pages of my textbook. They've led me down a path of fierce advocacy and historically rooted activism and community education that perhaps I wouldn't have traversed otherwise. And so to Wagner, I'm tremendously grateful. But to, to be honest, uh, even though history was not my thing growing up, uh, not to mention that the voices of people that looked like me were traditionally absent from the curriculum, but that's another story. But it was actually my work here at Wagner in activism that inspired me to pursue a, doc, a doctorate in history. And so as I was spending time advocating for African-American communities and wrestling with notions of systemic and racial oppression, I quickly realized the inherent continuity between our present plight and generations past. 
I was drawn to the stories of this resilient population that have reckoned with these systems for generations. They've traversed unknown lands, chained to the cargo holds of ships, and waded in the murky, uncharted waters of the new world. They've stood in the face of attack dogs and water hoses and wept aloud as they viewed the open casket of Emmett Till. They've chastised strategically placed food deserts and rebuked the water in Flint. They've mourned the, the loss of breath and life and dignity in times of unspeakable injustice. And yet, they've continued to mobilize, to organize and step-by-step step start to actualize the deferred dreams that Martin Luther King Jr. dared to articulate. And so today I'm grateful. I'm grateful to have been equipped, trained and nurtured here at Wagner to hopefully be a small part of this legacy of freedom fighters and change agents that I'm talking about. Because it was here that I honed my senses and my heart for justice. Not only did I develop my voice and my ability to ver verbally articulate concerns, but I also developed my sight to be able to see and identify the needs of my community while envisioning a brighter future. My ears were trained to hear the cries of distant ancestors while listening with compassion to those I had the privilege to serve. My nose became acclimated to the smell of sweat and hard work as I became willing to tangibly hold space for others and frequently get my hands dirty. And then my heart grew to give and receive the love, dignity, and respect that each of us, all of my fellow human beings require. And so with that being said, I am forever grateful to Wagner and to each of you, to all of the people receiving awards tonight that I've had the privilege to work with or to learn from or to know. And I'm honored to be a small part of Wagner's legacy of producing civic-minded change agents that dare to dream, envision, and create a better world. And so for that, I say thank you. Thank you so much, Kerry. Um, there is nothing more powerful than storytelling and a good story, one that captures the human condition has the ability to enlighten the listener and unite us across differences. Again, Carrie, thank you so much for sharing your Wagner story with us. And with that, your truth. Um, it is my distinct honor to introduce our student recipient of the MLK Agent of Change Award, Jonathan Irizarry. Who you are tomorrow begins with what you do today. For Jonathan, growing up in the military household, that was the principle he was raised on. Jonathan is currently a graduate student studying to obtain his master's degree in the area of finance. Originally from Houston, Texas, Jonathan spent most of his life moving around, one of the norms of being a child in a military family. But his experiences combined with his belief in your tomorrow is determined by your actions today, led Jonathan to an NCAA Division I full football scholarship and subsequently a student athlete at Wagner College. During his undergraduate years, Jonathan was involved in many student organizations, activities, BSU, Black Student Union, MCI, the Men of Color Initiative, the MOVE Program, Community Leader, Student Athlete Advisory Committee, and the first president of a Latinx club called ALMA. Jonathan's success in the classroom, on the field, involvement in campus life shows that you can be a successful student athlete and an active member of our beloved community. It is my distinct honor to turn it over to our student recipient of the MLK Agent of Change Award. Thank you, Sadiq. I'd like to first give a thank you out to everyone that has always believed in me, my family, my friends, my coaches, and my teammates. I also want to thank all the respected co-curricular groups that I was honored to be a part of, ALMA, BSU, and the Men of Color Initiative. In the words of Tim Fargo, 
Who you are tomorrow begins with what you do today. I always wondered why in life I have dealt with so many challenges and controversies. I never truly saw the reasoning for all the deprivation in my life. Little did I know it was shaping me to become the leader I am today. Growing up an underprivileged minority child, I have learned to endure many hardships from having no roof over my head, nor having a place to call home. Obstacles such as these made me yearn for a better life. I soon realized that my ticket out of such affiliations was my love for football. Though as promising of a life as this might sound, some journeys aren't always the rosiest, which led me to another misfortune. The most popular path for most college bound athletes, people think, is to get good grades, show off their athleticism, graduate and head to a big division one academic institution on a fully paid scholarship. Not the case in my particular collegiate path. Being naive made me ruin a full ride to a division one college and brought me to a junior college. During my time at this junior college, I was able to grow and become wiser. It was there I learned to become humble and more appreciative of everything. All my hard work brought me to getting a full scholarship here at Wagner. I came to Wagner with the mindset of leaving my legacy, a legacy that represents equality, courage, and hard work, both athletically and academically. One that stands against social injustice, one that stands for fairness. I'm tired of seeing my brothers and sisters of color fall short of equality due to a broken system. A system established by a government that is supposed to be for the people and by the people. But the people are divided. A government that is consumed and corrupted by power, greed, and hatred for people based on their color, creed, and religion. This inspired and motivated me to be a part of many co-curricular groups within the Wagner College community. I joined, I joined groups such as the Men of Color Initiative to help create a space for minority men to be able to learn and talk about different things in life. I also helped founded a group that was made to bring representation to the Latinx community on campus called Alma and was its president. I joined the Black Student Union, was in the MOVE program, and I also was a community leader on campus. Being in these groups helped me realize that I wanna help and be a part of my community more. So when I graduate and start my adult life, I wanna start my own foundation for minority children just like me called MOVE, which stands for Motivate, Overcome, Visualize, and Empower. I know it's not going to be easy, but one thing I've learned is that faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. I hope this testament of how I overcame my struggles will become a part of someone else's survival guide. After all, remember, who you are tomorrow begins with what you do today. I thank you again for this wonderful honor. Jonathan, thank you so much for your thoughtful remarks and uh, congratulations to you and to all of our um, awardees this evening. We are so, so proud of everyone. Um, as we come to the conclusion of tonight's event, we again congratulate um, each of our recipients for the effort and love that is embodied in the work that they've done and will continue to do, continue to do so within the communities they serve. For our attendees, again, thank you so much for showing your support. I know that many of you have been inspired by our recipients, and I hope that this inspiration continues onward into the communities that you are a part of as well and have great influence. So with that, um, I do wanna say thank you again um, to everyone and on behalf of the Division of Campus Life and the college, um, we wish you a great rest of your evening and take care. <laughs>